Hi everyone, welcome back to our devotion time. Today is December 14th and our devotion is titled Brokenness from Psalm 34 verse 18. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we ask today that you would give us revelation in your word. Help us to understand the depth of your love for us. That you are never disgusted by our weakness and brokenness, but that you are there to mend us, to help us, to heal our hearts, our minds, our bodies. Holy Spirit, I ask for your anointing today as I share in your word. And I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Broken things are considered worthless and thrown away. The shattered glass, the old toy, the pen that has run out of ink. The world is full of people with hearts that are broken by betrayal, disappointment, or loss. At some point, all of our hearts were broken by sin, selfishness, pride, and willfulness. Strongholds that God needed to break in our lives. There is a beauty to brokenness because in the mending process, we see Jesus at work. When we are broken, we are ripe for repair and need to turn to the master rebuilder. When we come to Christ with a repentant heart, God draws close to save us. When life gets tough and circumstances crush the spirit, God draws close to comfort us. When our desperation drives us to our knees, God draws close to deliver us. Is your heart broken today? Cry out to the master rebuilder. He will begin the work. I don't know where you are today as far as this subject goes. Maybe you are in the brokenness. Maybe you're past it but can empathize with others. Or maybe you're just getting ready to begin to be in a broken place. I don't know. But I want to encourage you today with some scripture. And hopefully we'll walk away from this understanding the depth of God's absolute love for us. And that when we're broken, he is right there to deliver us. Because God doesn't despise our sorrow. He considers our pain and brokenness as a sacrifice, as a gift and an offering to him when we give our pain to him. Because it's a sign of trust. It's a sign of faith. Let's open up to Psalm 51. Okay. Psalm 51 verse 17 tells us the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, you will not despise. So the Lord does not despise your brokenness. And for him, it's a sacrifice given unto him. Let's go over to Psalm 147. Go to verse 3. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. When we bring our pain to the Lord, He binds our wounds and brings healing to our broken spirit, to our heart, to our emotions. Sometimes it's our physical body. But He sets things right in us again. And over time, we will see that we've been healed. As we cling to the Lord, as we seek the Lord, as we surrender those things that hurt us, He, over time, brings healing 
through his comfort and through his love. Now let's go over to Isaiah 57 and let's read verse 15. For thus says the Lord, or for thus says the one who is high and lifted up, who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place and also with him who is of a contrite and lowly spirit to revive the spirit of the lowly and to revive the heart of the contrite. So even though the Lord dwells in high and exalted places, he comes and he meets us right where we are. He dwells in our hearts, you guys, and he meets you right in the middle of your need. All you have to do is ask. And he will always meet you when you come to him in spirit and in truth with a contrite heart that says, Lord, I need you. He is never too high and lofty for relationship with us. Amen. Now let's go over to Hebrews. And let's go to chapter 4. And let's read verses 15 and 16. Because we need to understand who Jesus is to us. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So we have to remember that Jesus can sympathize with everything that we go through because he endured brokenness. He endured rejection. He endured pain when he was on this earth with us. And so he can relate to anything you're going through today. He walked through this life just as we do. Just as a human. You know, on Sunday, I taught a class. I taught the, the kids, the kindergarten through second grade. And these are five, six, and seven-year-olds. And I had to really, we were talking about Jesus coming and, and Herod and the birth of Christ and everything to do with Christmas. And one of the things I did with them was to get their attention, was to help them understand the depth of what it meant when Jesus gave up his position in heaven to become a man. Okay? And I, I was using one of the little girls there as an example. And I said, you know, let's take, and I'll use the name Susie. That's not her name, but that's the name I'll use. I said, let's take Susie for example. Jesus, he sees that Susie has sin, that she's doing things that are going to hurt her, that she's basically walking toward a cliff and she's about to fall off into, into the flames of fire. How does he talk to us? Well, let's put ourselves in that same example. If we saw a group of ants and we knew that the, they were headed and following each other toward this cliff. And they were diving right off into the fire. How would we ever be able to talk to them? They don't speak human English. They don't speak any human language. They can't understand us. We could stand there and shout at them until we were blue in the face. But those little ants would never understand. So Susie sees them and decides she's going to stop being inhuman for a season. She's going to put on the suit of an ant. She's going to become one of them. She's going to go down and she's going to talk to them in their language and express to them that they're about to die. Well, that's what Jesus gave up. That's what he did for you and I. We couldn't speak the spirit language. We could not speak through the spirit without him. He had to come and become one of us, literally, in every sense. He put on a man's suit and became a human being. 
just so he could communicate with you, just so he could be that high priest who sympathizes with everything you go through. And the reason I told that analogy is because I want us to comprehend the depth of his love and just how much he really does understand us. So when we go to him for comfort, he's going to comfort us. He's not going to look down on us. He's not going to bring condemnation. He's not going to break you further. He's not going to despise you for a broken heart or for a weakness. Because he wants you to give him your pain. He wants you to bring your suffering to him. He wants to take it upon himself and in turn give you peace. You know, just as our devotion stated, God draws nearer to those who are hurting. And to those who reach out to him, to those who see their need of his saving grace. And he doesn't turn away from us. Our needs and our pain, our contrite heart, they draw, they draw God to us. They draw him closer. He desires to heal us. And he wants to mold us into his image. You know, when I've been my most vulnerable in life, when I've been in the midst of times that I that I've felt like I should be the furthest away from God, but I called out to him, and I waited. That was the time when I felt the closest. Those are the times I look back on. And I see that that was where I experienced my greatest growth. So if you're feeling today that your spirit, your heart is broken, that you're physically shattered, please don't go through this alone. Please cry out to the Lord. Cry out to your Savior and allow him to hold you and to mend your brokenness. Because that is his desire, is to hold you right where you are. Let's pray. Lord, we need some repair work done in our hearts today. And we thank you for being broken so that our brokenness can be healed. Lord, thank you for becoming one of us and understanding our brokenness, understanding the wounds that we experience in this life. Thank you for not despising us because we're weak. Thank you, Lord, that instead you lift us up, you honor us when we show our weakness to you. Help every single person that's listening to trust in you today, Lord. To understand that in their pain, in their brokenness, in their woundedness, you are right there. You are right with them. And the moment they call on you, you will begin that healing process. Lord, we praise you and we thank you today for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you guys. Thank you so much for being with me today. I hope you're having a wonderful week. Please help me share, help me share the gospel by hitting like, making a comment, sharing the video, and help me to send out the message that Jesus loves all people and that he wants to help them just like he's helping each of us every day. Have a blessed day. Be safe. And I love you. And I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.